We've looked at several in door fire of formerly Salentium PC CPU coolers over the past several months, and these have ranged from budget air coolers to RGB equipped all in ones. In this review, we're looking at the biggest cooler from Indorfi thus far, the 360mm Navis F360. No frills, no gimmicks, just solid cooling at an affordable price point is what Indorfi aims for with the Navis F360. So let's see how this triple fan unit performs on our test system. The accessory bundle is the usual set of mounting hardware for modern Intel and AMD sockets, excluding Threadripper that is. Indorfi also supplies a small tube of Pactum PT3 thermal paste and there's a fan extension connection cable. For the 360mm class aluminium radiator, Indorfi goes with the standard go-to thickness of around 27-28mm. The radiator fins are all black as we would expect from a styling perspective. In fact, on that note, this cooler is basically all black everything, so let us know in the comments section below if you really like that. Black braided tubing is a clear quality touch that adds to the premium feel of this cooler, despite it's not particularly premium price point. And with regards to tubing flexibility, this is reasonably positive. If you factor in the rotation of the connection entry points on the pump block unit, the flexibility is actually solid. Sizing of the copper coal plate is large, and that size means that it should easily suffice for a bigger area heat spreaders such as Intel High-End Desktop and Ryzen. As in Dorfi supplies a tube of its Pactum PT3 thermal paste separately, there is none pre-applied. And I must say, this is an approach that I personally prefer because it just gives me a little bit more control over things. I like that. Big chunkiness is clearly one of the uh, focus points for the design of Indorfi's pump block unit. The bracket mounting hardware for Intel and AMD platforms is pre-applied and this should ease the installation procedure, albeit at the cost of limited upgradability if Intel, for example, decides to change the mounting solution anytime soon. The ceramic bearing pump is PWM controlled, which is superb. This takes a SATA power connector and a four pin fan connection to manage the pump unit for its speed range of 1600 to 2600 RPM. And as we've already mentioned with the all black everything styling, there's no RGB lighting on the pump block unit or any of the cooler in fact. So I know that will appeal to some of you. One short sighted design feature though is that the Endorphi brand logo cannot be rotated on that pump block unit. So depending on the installation location, the logo orientation may not suit your individual preference. Three of Endorphi's Fluctus 120 PWM fans are pre-applied on the cooler and that certainly makes for an easier installation process. Rated speed for these 120 mm fluid dynamic bearing fans is 250 to 1800 RPM via their four pin PWM connector. To further aid cable management and ease of installation, all three fans are daisy chained together out of the indoor fire facility. And this means that a single four pin extension cable as supplied in the accessory bundle can be used to power and control all three fans from just the motherboard CPU header. Indoor fire uses a fluid dynamic bearing inside the fans and there are clear optimizations on the blades to suit the pressure biased use case. Cable management for the Navis F360 CPU cooler is just straightforward, it's really easy. And that is thanks in large to the pre-installed fan cables. As for warranty, the three years offered by Endorphi is just okay as far as I'm concerned. Let's be real, three years is not particularly great for a modern all-in-one liquid cooler as many of the top units offer five-year warranties, but it isn't too bad either, I guess. And that's particularly potent as the fans are rated at 100,000 hours mean time between failure. Installation was very quick and easy thanks in large to Endorphi's pre-applied hardware and that uh, integrated mountain block system for the Intel named D hardware. All we really needed to do initially was to insert the threaded standoffs into the default AM4 backplate we then applied paste and positioned the pump block unit. And once the spring and thumb screws were tightened, the block was in position, it was ready to go. Of course, the pre-applied fans made radiator installation quick and simple. And then the reasonable number of cables was easy to route and deal with neatly. So overall, yeah, 
Simple installation as far as I'm concerned and easy to get that cable management looking real good. Testing for the Endorphine Navis F360 is handled on our usual go-to CPU cooling test system for AM4. This is based around an overclocked Ryzen 9 5950X processor, which also runs in Precision Boost Overdrive mode. The motherboard is a Gigabyte B550 Aorus Master with its excellent VRM. We've got a Sysonic TX1000 1kW power supply. There's 32 gigs of Corsair Vengeance LPX DDR4 memory in there. Graphics comes from a Gigabyte RTX 2060 Super in 0RPM mode and the chassis is a Fractal Design Meshify 2 with triple 140mm fans. For testing we use a 30 minute looped run of Cinebench R23 multi-threaded and we record the steady state temperature towards the end of that run. Ambient is maintained around about 22 to 24 or 25 degrees Celsius and where we vary slightly outside of that range we will add in more tests just to ensure the validity of the data. As always if you want more details on our test procedures, our hardware, our comparison points then please do check out the written review on the main Kikuru webpage that also supports us massively so win-win. Let's get into the testing. Let's start off with noise performance at 100% fan speed. This is important for getting an indication of where our performance expectations should lie based on noise output. Triple 1800 RPM fluid dynamic bearing fans on the Endorphine Navis F360 aren't exactly quiet at full speed, but they aren't too bad either. With a noise output rating of 48 dBA for our test scenario, this is actually one of the quieter 360mm all-in-ones that we've tested. The speed control range is pretty good too. Full speed performance from the Endorphine Navis F360 is very good on our overclocked Ryzen 9 5950X test CPU. The performance result from this budget option is right up there with some of the best 360mm liquid coolers on the market. And it's a smidgen better than the 280mm Navis F280 from Endorphine 2. We adjust each cooler's fan speeds until our 40 dBA noise output target is reached. In order to get the cooler run at 40 dBA, we had to drop the trio fans to 55% of their maximum PWM duty cycle. This translated into around 1270 RPM operating speed according to the UEFI readings. That's a large drop in fan speeds from Endorphi, even versus some of the other 360mm all-in-ones. It highlights that the chosen Fluctus 120 PWM fans are perhaps not the most noise efficient, even though they do well at full speed. So that final point highlights that there's clearly headroom to ramp up the fans without adding too much more noise stress compared to some other 360s. So we have to give Endorphi credit there. When locked at 40 dBA noise output, the Endorphi Navis F360 does very well in our test hierarchy. Here, it maintains its position as one of the best performing 360mm all-in-ones that we've tested thus far, and it continues to outdo Endorphi's own 280mm cooler by a very slim margin. This is a positive result overall. Next up is the Precision Boost Overdrive set of results. We must highlight the small differences in the display delta temperatures are not so important here, and that's because the PBO testing focuses more on clock speed and cooling power achieved, so watch out for those too. Switching back to full fan speeds and with the processor running in PBO mode, we continue to see strong performance from the Endorphine Avis F360. While the recorded temperature is slightly higher than some of the AO comparisons, this is not really a clear indication of PBO performance from Endorphine, and that's because the 360mm all-in-one does very well in terms of recorded CPU frequency and the package power handled. Once again, we see very strong performance from the Navis F360 that indicates its ability to compete with some of the market's premium 360 AO offerings. VRM cooling performance is poor though. This may be due to the mounting location with respect to concentration of the fan's airflow. Whatever the reason, our test system did not fare well for VRM thermals when used with the Navis F360, so that's clearly something to bear in mind. Just like its overall design approach, I think that the Endorphine Avis F360 is a pretty simple one to analyze. This is a no-nonsense CPU cooler that offers a performance competitive with some of the best premium AOs on the market, and the seemingly affordable UK market price in around £130 is not bad, but it does offer up some tough market competitors from the likes of Arctic and Deepcool. Noise performance at full fan speed is actually reasonably okay, given the... Uh, 360mm all-in-one liquid coolers it's competing with. We did have to shed quite a bit of fan speed to hit 40 dBA noise output, but that's not such a bad outcome because the performance is good and the fan curve headroom is retained. Straightforward and quick are two words that I would definitely use to describe the overall installation procedure from Endorphi. The chunky pump block unit with semi-integrated mounting hardware is an interesting one though because this makes the install process quick 
but it does also present possible clearance headaches on some motherboards and perhaps upgradability for a future Intel or AMD socket is limited, particularly as we see no Threadripper compatibility whatsoever. At this price point of somewhere in the £130 in the UK region, the three-year warranty is just okay as far as I'm concerned. Clearly, Arctic and Deepcool are particularly tough competitors in this market segment, but when those vendors offer five or six-year warranties on their more premium offerings, Indoor Fi's three years doesn't seem like such a great deal. But do you personally care about warranties on a CPU cooler? Really interested to hear your opinion on that one, so let me know in the comment section down below, please. Overall, I like the Endorphine Navis F360, and that's because it's a reasonably priced, no-nonsense liquid cooler that offers up stellar performance without too much noise output. Let's just cross our fingers that the UK availability improves, as currently it's pretty difficult to find, other than from some no-name store that we'd never really heard of, that ships to the UK. But that simply is not going to suffice for most buyers who would just opt for a different product from the likes of Arctic or Deepcool instead. So yeah, UK availability clearly needs to improve. And I hope it does, because this is a good product overall. I've been Luke Hill for Kick Group. Thank you for watching this video review of the Endorphi Navis F360 CPU cooler. Let us know what you think in the comments section down below. Do you like this all black everything design choice? Do you like what Endorphi is doing with some of the CPU cooling range that is offered up? Let us know in the comments section down below. As always, please do all that YouTube stuff, like, subscribe, uh, write a comment on the channel. Please check out the main review on the written Kicker website, uh, Patreon, Discord, all the social media and the likes, and I will catch you in the next one.